the left-hand column is nothing but the general fund net targets that were in the first challenges bill uh, that you passed. So if you remember, uh, the net savings uh, added up to $37,872,000. Um, in the identified savings are the, uh, is the administration analysis, which you've also seen before on a spreadsheet that we gave to joint fiscal, of uh, how much identified and approved savings there were uh, after you had passed the second challenges bill. Uh, so of course that was a different number when we presented our proposals, it was a different number when the bill came out of the House, uh, the Senate, and finally uh, what passed. Uh, this is our analysis. So that says that we've only identified uh, 27.5 million out of 37.8 million worth of uh, savings that we need for fiscal 11. This is all fiscal 11, this is all general fund, and this is all net of investment dollars. Um, so if we look at where that gap is, um, the biggest part of it, not surprisingly, because it's always where most of the money is, uh, is $6.4 million is still to be identified savings in the Agency of Human Services. And uh, although Rob and his team have begun to work on that, uh, they gave priorities they should have to making sure that they have the initiatives underway to capture the $10 million uh, that were approved, uh, have made good progress on that, but still have uh, this large amount of savings yet to achieve. Uh, in corrections, uh, the gap is one and a half million dollars. Uh, one possibility, uh, which is obviously a controversial one, is that we do manage to accomplish the things that we need to do uh, in order to close part of the facility. Uh, under the law, as it was passed, um, we can only do that uh, by giving notice to the legislature when you come back into session um, and after time for the legislature to act if the legislature doesn't want us to do that. And I can't say at this time whether we would be in a position to say we reduce population responsibly enough to recommend closure of anything. Uh, but as you, uh, that would represent one possible savings. Uh, but we have to uh, do it on the timeline that the legislature uh, establishes. We don't have permission to close the facility, but only if the legislature is in session uh, and after we give a notice to the legislature. Uh, something to notice, you know, well, let me go on there. Uh, in education, uh, as you know, for fiscal year 11, the total amount of savings really is accounted for. A lot of work to be done on measures. There's a lot of work to be done on make, getting sustainable savings in education, getting savings for fiscal year 12. For fiscal year 11, uh, education is not really a budget problem. That, that one is done. Um, the regulatory challenge, uh, we still need to find additional savings there, but it's a small amount of money compared to the total. And then finally, we have $2 million uh, which was initially savings that were allotted to the regulatory challenge. Our Senate our Appropriations Committee actually reduced the amount of that challenge so that the, the, the amount as the legislation finally passed uh, is the 965600 uh, And so this gap that I show of $2 million, uh, we need to make up across the challenges. It's not something that we can do uh, simply in the regulatory challenge, nor is it part of the law. No, no, no. Did I, what did I say? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I absolutely do. Thank you. Uh, economic development. Uh, going back up a little and, and looking at my notes, uh, the charter challenge, we have slightly more than two million of savings identified so far. Uh, particularly with the addition of the fleet management stuff that Jerry's going to talk to me about. Uh, I think we have more possibilities there, which I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So uh, if there's any challenge where I'm uh, confident of overachieving, it's that charter unit challenge.
down. And I think that's good news because it, it, this is, is sort of good substantive, sometimes it's revenue enhancement. And it's good stuff to be doing. Um, but that isn't going to close the hole down by itself. And the hardest work we obviously have left to do is in the human services challenge. Uh, a potential cloud on the horizon is the extended FMAP. Uh, as you remember, that our $3.1 million of EFMAP was allotted to, to be the investment in the Department of Corrections challenge. Um, so if we don't get that, we have a $3.1 million hole. Uh, for not the ability to make the investment. Of course, the investment is necessary uh, to achieve the objectives and to get the savings. Uh, $2 million was allocated for an RFP process in AHS, the community-driven RFP process. And, and, uh, uh, Rob can talk a little about the RFP. The idea was that we would solicit ideas that would uh, result in a million dollars worth of savings in the first year and we pay uh, in performance contracts to whatever agencies came up with those, uh, community agencies came up with those ideas uh, using $2 million of investment money that we would get from FRAP. So if we didn't get that money, uh, then presumably we wouldn't be able to make that investment uh, which would mean that we would lose one million. There's, there's really only one million and not two million dollars worth of exposure there uh, for fiscal year 11 because we wouldn't make the two million dollar investment. Uh, and but what we would lose from an accounting point of view is the million dollars worth of savings that we were hoping to get from the investment. So at this point, it doesn't look like. No, I wouldn't say that. What it, does, it, it doesn't look like we're going to get it quickly. And it doesn't look like we're going to know quickly. Uh, the latest that I heard was that Congress really intends to pass uh, some amount of that pass. And that doesn't mean it's all of it um, after the election, uh, but doesn't want to pass it before the election. Um, but you know how anybody can guarantee what nobody knows what's going to happen after the election. I haven't had a chance to talk to the governor and the staff since they've been at NGA, and they may have learned more there because this is obviously a hot topic for the governor. So right now, we're proceeding on the basis that we will get the EF map. Um, we have plenty to do, and we think it's most likely that one way or another, some or all of it materializes, so that's the responsible thing to do. Uh, but we're going to keep tracking the situation in Washington and, and that changes, it changes. So I just wanted to point out that it's not, you know, we thought it was sort of, everybody sort of thought it was in the bag during the session. That is, the Congress would pass it, but nobody was sure. And 